Um, thank you all for being here this morning. And uh, to follow up a little bit on uh, the ranking member's uh, line of questioning there with regards to the size of, of the loans, um, you know, the other day we had FHA individual in here uh, talking about their model of how they were doing things. Over the last couple of years, they indicated that they've actually expanded the, the larger part of their, or the portfolio part of their, of their business to making larger loans. And they did it, they said, to obviously because of the increasing amount of premium they can get to shore up their bottom line. And it would be counter to what I've heard this morning from I think both two or three of you with regards to the data here that you're quoting this morning indicates that FHA actually has not been making larger loans in increasing numbers. Uh, can you give me some information on that? Mr. Chappelle, I know you, were, you had a lot of information in your testimony. Thank you, Congressman. <coughs> the Congress gave FHA the authority in 2008 to expand its mortgage limits to help ensure there was liquidity in the entire mortgage market because private businesses made the decision, the smart decision, to pull back. The Congress wanted to make sure that there was money available so that the market would not collapse as, as, as far uh, worse than it actually did. And so they gave the authority to the, to the FHA to raise their limits. FHA raised the limits. But the point is they, they have done very few loans over $400,000. Nine percent of their business is only over $400,000. Is it increasing, though? I mean, no, that was, it's going that was the, the other point way. that they made the other day, that they're it, increasing those numbers. It, the, and they're looking at the last couple of years of loans they've made, and they keep coming back and saying their portfolio has improved. Our, our, our past dues are less, our loss ratios are less, and are pointing to that portion of, of their business as, as but improving their, their overall picture. But the key, the key issue is, is structurally in the FHA program, FHA charges every borrower the same premium. By charging every borrower the same premium, which some of my colleagues here, here aren't too crazy about, but by charging everybody the same premium, that means people with lower risk are paying more. It's been a fundamental part of every audit that I can remember that higher balance loans perform better than lower balance loans. So by definition, if you're charging those borrowers here, if, if your premium's here <coughs> on those borrowers, you're, they're overpaying their premium. Consequently, well, they'll go to the private MI because it's a better deal unless they have no other choice. So the my, 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 my comeback to that would be, and I, I'm not trying to argue with you here, but I, I, it, it's, I'm getting some, some different information from those other folks who testified earlier. And, and having been in the, in the financial services industry for 35 years, I can tell you that, yeah, you, the bigger loans they may, you may make more money on, but you also have more exposure to loss because there's a bigger loan there. And if you don't have better criteria on those larger loans and you don't do a better job of underwriting those loans, your exposure is greater. On the front end, you may make a few more dollars, but on the back end, your exposure is huge because it's a larger loan. If it goes south, you've got a bigger problem. So I'm not sure that they're actually more risk in the long term if that's the case. But if, if you're saying they're not doing that, why well, I uh, appreciate your testimony this morning. Uh, from the standpoint of uh, uh, Ms. Brazemore, you, you had some interesting uh, comments here with regards to the number of suggestions uh, on how to price risk and how uh, FHA could uh, improve their book of business. Could you go back over those? I thought some of those were pretty salient. And I guess my, my initial question would be, as you go through them, has FHA thought about doing some of these things? Are you talking with them? Have they got a, uh, a, a, a an ombudsman program, for instance, that you would be able to communicate with and have them take up some of these suggestions? I would say that, uh, first of all, clearly Your microphone. Thank you. Clearly, they've made some changes in terms of increasing their pricing. I think part of it is just to understand what their risk is and making sure the pricing is commensurate with the risk that they're taking on. Um, but with respect to risk sharing, I think the concept there, which is something that we have taught, had some engaged conversation about, is with the idea of being able to bring some of what we have built in the private mortgage insurance industry to bear in a way that would be really a partnership. And the, I mean, we've built a lot in terms of risk analytics. We've built a lot in terms of our ability to analyze portfolios, even on a weekly basis, what's being submitted, and to communicate back with the lenders who are originating those loans to help them understand okay. what's going on. Thank you. My time's about ready to run out. I want to make one quick point. <clears throat> there are certain tenets of sound lending that are inescapable. 
regardless if it's a large loan or a small loan. And if you get away from those sound tenants of lending, you're going to lose. And it seems to me that we have continually done that with some of our GSEs. We continually, we know what we need to be doing, and yet we fall away from that. And when we, as soon as we do, we wound up in trouble. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank